Well, the Gospel Coalition put out yet another article on the glories of singleness and being single called Homemaking is for Singles too, and how you can make your home as a single person. Now, I want to preface this with my pastor just a few months back had said that he's he's in his 70s and he said that he was talking about him and his wife had their 50th wedding anniversary. They have, I don't know, 15 grandchildren or I forgot how many grandchildren they have, but he was talking about that and how wonderful that is. And then he said, after after all that, he said, and you singles, you are not missing out on anything because you're in the kingdom of God or, you know, blah, blah, whatever. And not that that's blah, blah, whatever, but, you know, it was kind of like, mm, yeah, I think as you reflect on your life, you would be missing out on quite a bit if you didn't have a wife and have children and have grandchildren, which you were just talking about. I mean, come on, like, don't lie to all the single people and say, you're not missing out on a single thing. Yeah, yeah, you're you're just missing out on your dadgum life. Yeah, it's just your dadgum life here that you're missing out on. I mean, come on. Anyway, homemaking is for singles too. This lady that wrote this article says she's in her mid-30s living in Washington, D.C. with three other single women in a house they are renting, and she's looking to make it her home. So they're they're making it a home. And I thought, man, in your 30s, the time window's closing. The time window's closing to have your own family then. And she says, and you know, I kind of feel bad for this this lady here that she says she she's hopes to have a family. She wants to have a family. She doesn't have a family. And yeah, I feel that that really kind of sucks. Um if you, you don't have that, but I'd also ask too, though, for, for her and, you know, a million other women that are in the same boat in their thirties, don't have a family. Like what, what have you done to be a desirable wife? Then like, what, what have a wife is a job description, right? And if you're applying for a job, Usually you try to meet those job requirements some somehow. And I would say most women, whether they're in the church or not, or outside, not in the church, whatever, they have no idea what it means to be a wife in 2023. It's almost 2024. It's like, I just show up and I'm the perfect, not the perfect, but I'll be an awesome wife. Like, okay, what, what is an awesome wife? I don't know. What do you think the average man wants in a wife? Well, I don't know. Who cares, right? They, uh, I don't know, right? It's just me. It's me. That's what they want. No, they don't, you know, like what, what do men want here would be a good question. Talking about homemaking, thinks of others, showing hospitality to others, inviting people into your home because you're single and you have all kinds of time to do that. Hey, that's great. That's great. But you know what would be even better? would be to fulfill the creation mandate in Genesis chapter one, to be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue the earth with your husband. That would be even better. That would be even better than this. She says that their, their home that she lives with, with a bunch of other single women, has a nice backyard, has a nice dining room table, that they can have people over for in Washington, D.C. Now, Washington, D.C., I know, has a ton of single people. It is not a place that's conducive to having a family. So number one, I'd say if you want to have a family, move on to Washington, D.C. Don't live in Washington, D.C. if you want to have a family, a lar or even a, a large family, more than one kid. Move out of Washington, D.C. That wouldn't be the place to do it, right? Like if you desire to be employed as a wife, if you desire to fill that job description, you have to go to a place where you can be employed with that. Just like if you want to work for NASA, if I, if I was an engineer, if I was an aeronautical engineer and I want to work for NASA, 
I would have to move to Cape Canaveral, Florida, or I'd have to move to what the Galveston area where NASA has that. I don't, there's only like three places in the U S or something where NASA has stuff like the big stuff going on. I'm sure they have little things, but whatever. If you want to be a NASA engineer, you got to move to where the jobs are as a NASA engineer. If you want to be a wife, don't live in Washington, DC. Okay. That's the first, that's the first thing. I'm gonna, you'll move out to some Amish community in Pennsylvania or something. You probably have a lot better chances so. though. Now, she says she knows a house of single men who have fruitfully used their location across the street from our church by hosting a gathering every week for Wednesday night Bible study. That sounds great. So they're using their home hospitality, hosting people, blah, 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 as single men. And I just wonder, okay, so you've got a household full of single women, you and three others. They've got a house full of single men. You're both in the same church. Light bulb comes up. Why are you guys not getting married here? Here's what the response I'm sure would be. Well, I just don't feel like they are the right fit. You know, I just don't get the tingles from these guys. I'm 100% sure that would be the response. Because... Here's the thing I think it's really happening in our, our current society that women would rather be single than settle for something they don't think is ideal. They'd rather be single than settle. Well, if I would go with that guy, I'd be settling. He's not A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. So I'd have to settle and I'd rather be single than settle. I really think that's where we're at right now. The average woman would rather be single than settle for whoever, whoever it is. And maybe these guys are a bunch of dink bats. I don't know. They never ask anybody out, I, whatever. But you just wonder, like, hey, you put right in the article. I know a group. They're at my church, a group of single guys. Like, the first thing in my mind, why are you guys not getting married then? They're right in your church. Like, you're in your 30s. You're not getting any younger. If you want to have your own family, you better darn well do it quick or else you will never have your own kids. Like your family line is dying out in the next five years. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. And I feel, I mean, I do feel bad for, for these women. I mean, men, they, we can have kids into our eighties or whatever, you know, but women, you, you don't do that. Like that's, <laughs> that's not, that's not, I mean, unless you're having John the Baptist and your name is Elizabeth, like you're, you're not going to do that. So that's tough. Anyway, we got to get it turned around. With all that, though, Christ is winning. He is building his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Until next time, this is the Post Millennial Man.